Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. So today I'm going to talk about my story while growing up. So as a young, at a young age, I was like any other normal kid. But then there was something else about me because I was so curious about every electronics in the house. I wanted to touch everything. I wanted to dismantle the things at a young age. I think at about eight, I started to fidget with the radio. I wanted to open it. I wanted to see the people inside. And then I was full of questions. Every now and then I'm asking, how? How are these people speaking in our house if they're not in our radio? Then they'll tell me, no, they're in the radio station. But I'm like, why? Why do I hear them in our house? And they would explain to me, even the TV, the same. I was the, I think, yeah. I don't think it's only for village kids. I was in the village. But then I would go behind the TV and peep. I wanted to see the news reader. I wanted to see. Whenever I saw kids in the TV, I wondered, how did they enter in our TV? So because of that, I really, really, really wanted to know how these things happen. And they told me, it seems you want to be an engineer. And I would go like, no. Mm -mm. I don't want to be an engineer. I'm not ready to climb on top of houses, because that's all I knew about engineering. And then there was my favorite cartoon. Um, it's called Handy Money. I don't know who watched Handy Money. But then Handy Money was my favorite cartoon. It was of this small man and his tools. So he used to walk around the whole town fixing people's problems, singing with his tools, like they were really happy. And I wanted to be like Handy Money. And they'll tell me, you can't be like Handy Money, you're a girl. You get. So that was disturbing. So with time, as I grew up, this curiosity did not end. Then I remember back in high school, um, I think I was in A-level, and I liked playing computer games. Road Rush was my favorite game. So after the ICT lectures, classes, um, I remember the teacher would call his favorite boys. He had about four, three boys. He would call them to remain behind and arrange the computer lab. Then one time, because I was playing my road rush, I got locked in the computer lab. And then I noticed that these people didn't only arrange the computers. It wasn't only dusting, putting the chairs right. They used to do connections. They used to troubleshoot problems. They were installing antiviruses. They used to even, you know, one time they, they got a chance to open the systems unit when I was there. And I'm like, wow, wow. I asked the teacher, can I also remain behind the next time? And he told me, it's OK. Anybody wants to remain behind can remain. So from that day, I started remaining behind after the classes are done. So I got a chance to do all these things. That's when I asked him, what do I study to do this? Because I love them. Then he told me, you can be an engineer. So I'm like, OK, engineers don't just make roads. They don't just climb on top of houses. I started getting a clear picture of what engineering means. So after the results were back for my USCE, I had performed well. And then my guardians asked me, what do you want to do at the university? I told them I want to do engineering. And they were like, wow, that's a brilliant idea. Then I got admitted for the course that was going to answer all my questions of hows and whys of all these electronics. That was telecommunication engineering. Um, so after getting into, in, into the university, I was so excited to be at the university. I didn't know there were challenges with being a lady doing engineering. I didn't know that, because at home, nobody looked shocked when I told them I wanted to do engineering. They didn't scare me. So I thought it was normal until when I reached campus. That's when I realized that, OK, I think I'm in the wrong place. The first challenge was stereotype. The society has a picture of how an engineer should look like. I don't know how they should look like, but then there is a way how an engineer should look like. So this happened to me. Um, during the first weeks at the university, there was a bazaar. So I came with my roommate, and we came for the bazaar to have fun. As we were having fun, a young gentleman walks to me and is like, I've never seen you in class. I told him, definitely, we don't do the same course. And he's like, which course are you doing? I told him, engineering. He was shocked. He almost ran away. I'm like, what's the matter? 
And he told me, you don't look like an engineer. So that was the end of having fun for me. He spoiled it for me. I'm like, what do you mean? Then he's like, engineers don't happen. You know? Engineers don't happen. You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be reading your books. So I look to the side and I'm like, you see? Those guys are my classmates. And he's like, those are guys. Like, what? So guys can happen, but because I'm a lady and I do engineering, I'm not allowed to happen. I can't have fun just because I'm a lady and I'm studying engineering. So I got a way of dealing with that. It was hard. When my friends would tell me, let's go out, let's go have fun, I would remain behind because I knew when I go out, they're going to judge me. Or else I had to go out and whenever they asked me what I was studying, I would say another course, something else like that. But that's not all. The next one is they don't expect you to do better than the males. So when results are back and you have A, definitely, they favored you because you're a girl. I know, they favored you because you're a girl. Even at the workplace, when you do better than them, just because you're a girl. No, I don't think there's a difference between a girl's brain and a boy's brain. I don't think there's any difference. So they'll always say, no, it's because you're a girl. So you're going to suffer from that, people's expectations. And then the other challenge I had was trying to prove myself. Since people are saying you've been favored because you're a girl, now I'm here to prove that it's not because I'm a girl that I'm doing better, but I'm actually doing better because I'm me. Now, how are you going to prove yourself? Thank you. How are you going to prove yourself? Now, this was a problem. Do I have to sit and read where everyone sees me so they know, yeah, she read, that's why she passed? What do I do? So I just wanted to keep up with the spirit. I'm like, okay, I've performed well. It's year one, everyone told me. Anyway, it's easy, they've favored you. Wait and see when you reach third year. I'm like, okay, now what do I do? Do I have to sleep in my books? Even if I sleep in my books, who will I slept in my books to pass? The end result is you have passed. And then time came when I started reading. I would go to the library, read. I go to the labs and read. And then that's when you'll find the boys who say they favored you. They're also reading. So we started discussing together. When they're discussing something, how is this done? I'll tell them it's done like this, like this. And they'll tell me it's done like this, like this. So from there they discovered, okay, maybe they're not favoring her. If she knows how this number is worked out, they're not favoring her. But still, it's hard to remove it from their minds that you're being favored because you're a girl. So those were a lot of challenges until I came out and decided to be myself. And the society started accepting me. I started happening when I felt like. I started reading whenever I felt like, dressing the way I want, you know? So when you put on a lot of makeup, they're going to be like, no, you're not an engineer, you're a slay queen. So what? Engineering is a profession. I have to look good because I'm a lady. I have to look good because I feel better looking that way. And when I look like that, I'm confident and I can perform better. Thank you. So that was the struggle with being in engineering school. And when the results were back, because um, I was the only lady in my class, at first the boys were keeping a distance from me, you know? It reached a point where I would sit and then there are like three seats, then another one sits next to me. They were not close to me. But time came when we became very friendly. We'd walk around and take selfies, we'd read together, call each other, how have you done this number? Help me with this, help me with this. Life got better the day I decided to be myself in the engineering class. And after that, um, I was lucky, not lucky, <laughs> Um, I got to train with a company, so I got a side job I was doing, side hustles as we say, and I was doing it. So also there, at the place of work, whenever these guys wanted something, they'll tell me, why don't you go and ask for it from the boss? You know, he's going to favor you, you're a girl. I no, the same thing again, I thought it ends at school, now it's happening here at work. 
it was terrible. I don't know why the society thinks being a lady has something attached to it. But then I've come out to tell the, um, to tell the society that there is no definite picture for an engineer or for any profession. It's just a profession and you are you. So I'm me, this is Rachel, engineering is a profession. So there is no way, I don't know, I'm not going to move in the safety way as everywhere for the world to know that I'm an engineer. Because I'm already an engineer and there is no definite picture of how an engineer should look like. Otherwise, yeah, I think I would just like to encourage all the girls and everyone, if you feel that this STEM, technology, engineering, science, and mathematics is meant for you, just grab it, work hard on it, and you'll make it. There is nothing like because you're a girl or it's for boys. It's all about working hard for it, loving it, and having passion for it. Thank you.